to Suburban Hunt 365. I am DJ and we are continuing on with our muzzleloader series this week. If you missed it, last week's video was on the Blackhorn 209, which is an extremely clean shooting powder. Had pretty good results. Hornady came out on top with an amazing one, I believe it was one and seven eighths inch group. I'll have to go back and look at that double check, but if you haven't, check that out in the link above. Today's video, we're going to be using the Pyrodex RS. And with a little bit of research, I could find that about 70 grains is, is where we're going to land. Uh, there again, I kind of picked this up from I Love Muzzle Loading, uh, the YouTube channel. He does a fantastic job. If you haven't seen him, by all means, put that in the search bar and check it out. He has a plethora of videos for muzzle loaders. He does have some for the inline, the modern inline, and he does a lot of the actual black powder muskets and such like that. So he does a great job. But anyway, he, he used a triple seven in 70 grains on one of his, so I felt safe using that in mine. So we use 70 grains loose powder in this challenge. Well, uh, we are going to be, are we continuing to use the Hornaday pocket scale. Uh, it does come with its own little cup and a 10 gram uh, calibrator on here. So as I mentioned last week, if you're at the range and you're reloading these, you've got to get out of the wind. The wind, these things are very sensitive, and as that wind hits this cup, it's going to start messing with your uh, your weights and what it's reading. It'll fluctuate about four, in my, what I saw was about 0.4 grain, or grains, rather, and that's pretty small. So if it's not a consistent weight, you need to get in your truck, get inside a building, do something like that to get out of the wind. So that way you make sure that you have a consistent load, again, by weight. So. Without any further ado, we're going to be sticking with the same six projectiles that we've been using. We're going to be using the 245 grain power belts, the 250 grain power belt aerolites, the 295 grain power belt coppers, the 330 grain ELRs, also by power belt, getting away from power belt, going into the federal Borlocks at 270 grains, and then last but not least, horny board drivers at 290. Like I said last week, they, they won the whole thing. So. Let's get into it and let's see how this works with the Pyrodex RS. 70 grains by weight. First up, 245 grain cop. Well, first off, I did not expect that light of a load to drop down that much. This particular muzzle loader is sighted in for the triple sevens pellets with the 245 grains, because I never changed that from years, years last year's. Uh, so for the 70 grains to drop that much, I was kind of surprised, but that came in with a pretty awesome group. Came in at one and three eighths of an inch group. Starting out pretty strong, starting out pretty strong. So that's gonna be hard to beat. So let's move over to the 250 arrow lights. All right, well, that was not that awesome. Uh, that one actually came in at three and one eighths of an inch. Now, at this point, I do need to make a point to say that while last week's video with the uh, Blackhorn 209 was obviously the most cleanest I've seen, period, hands down, this Pirate Dex is pretty filthy. It's pretty rough. Uh, and this is my first time using loose powders, and I know this stuff's been around for a while, but with this particular one, instead of running just a basic boar snake, do it like I was able to do in last week's video. This one, after every three shots, I literally had to take solvent, clean out that barrel, two or three swabs, both wet and dry, and even then I had to take another brush and clean out that crud ring that's on the bottom. This stuff was pretty messy. Uh, after using that Blackhorn 209, I really don't have any interest in using this as dirty as it is, unless I just absolutely have to, or this just produces amazing results 245 grain, 138 is pretty good, pretty good. So, anyway, getting back to this, the Aerolites came in at 3 and 1 8. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the 295s and see how they did. Ah, that's 4 inches. Uh, so, we're getting worse. So, there again had to get in there and really clean this thing out and make sure that it looked good in between each set. But what concerns me is, is that as dirty as it is at the end of the set, how much 
residue and soot and stuff like that is in the barrel and that's causing this. Now when I'm putting these rounds down in there, I'm making sure that the same mark on my ram rod is being hit. So the bullet, the projectile itself is at the same level in every shot. I'm trying to make this as consistent as possible. So in my opinion, the only thing that really could affect this is the amount of crap that's inside that barrel. So I'm really curious to see how this works because that 245 grain was a very clean, brand new barrel. So right now we're working away from that. First the two, the three and one eighths, now at four inches. So let's see if we can turn this thing around with the 330 grain ELRs. Right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now, that dog will hunt. I could take that load out right now. Now granted, I've got it about three notches down on my scope for the drop, but for all three of those to land, that ain't nothing but a couple clicks up. Well, more than a couple, but I, man, I like that. At 100 yards, I like that a lot. That group came in at two and three eighths of an inch. Unfortunately, that's not gonna overtake the 245 grain that came in at the beginning, excuse me. Uh, but that is a pretty good group, and I just, being that close to bullseye, uh, that's got me going pretty good. Anyway, now that we have two power belts that done pretty well, let's go ahead and let's get out of the power belts. Let's move to the Federal Borlocks at 270 grain. Ouch. All right, well, that one actually ended up, because of that flyer to the right over there at the end, uh, that is four and a quarter inch group. That's, that's getting beyond what I'm comfortable shooting with. So, so far we've got two decent groups. Let's move on. Next up, horny board drivers. All right, well that's actually a pretty interesting group, especially since the first shot was high and those other two were low, but those last two hit pretty close to each other. I would honestly say just about an inch. Uh, so clean bore on the first shot versus dirty bore on the bottom. Uh, so just so you guys know, I don't pop a cap in between. There are some guys I know that when they clean the barrel out, they will put a cap down the barrel just to get the, to foul it, basically is what we call it. Uh, I did not do this during any one of these tests. So now with this, I'm kind of curious about that because after that first shot, the next two came in. Unfortunately, this group came in at six inches, which is actually the worst group we've shot across this entire test so far, pellets or loose powder. So that's nothing on Hornady. I, I, just, I had to, as dirty as this stuff was, guys, it's gonna cause you problems. I hate to kind of put that on them, but it's true. Uh, I know Blackhorn 209 is kind of hard to find right now, but if you guys are able to get a hold of that and you just have to use the loose powders, I would highly recommend using the Blackhorn 209. So the winner of today by a decent amount is going to be the Power Belt 245 grain coppers with a one and three eighths of an inch group. So again, the one thing I love about these powders is you can change it. And I mentioned this in last week's video that I'm gonna do a ladder test where I'm gonna take the minimum, the middle, and the maximum charge by weight, and we're going to run those and see how uh, the particular projectiles like them. Does it get tighter? Does it get looser? Where does it go? Uh, as a reloader with smokeless powder, we do that for everything. And I've spoken with a couple different guys and they just, their muzzle loaders like the heavier end. So maybe the 70 being in the middle, maybe that's what happens. Maybe I do need to up the charge a little bit and then try it again, which we can do in a future video. So if you guys have hung out with us this long, guys, I really, really do appreciate you sticking out with us. If you can hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. That'll really help us out. Throw us a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Give us more of the different load projectiles that you want to see and we will give them a shot. That's what we do. And guys, because of the fact that YouTube has changed their partnership requirements, we're almost there guys. We're almost to a thousand at this point, but they've changed it to allow us to have some attributes of it. And below the screen, you'll see a heart that says thanks. It is a super thanks button where you can donate a little money towards our channel 
and I promise you, you have my word, every single dime will go to replacing the different components like what you see behind me to make more videos like this. So again, I appreciate you guys. I'm DJ with Suburban Hunt 365. We'll catch you on the next one.